Good morning, traders. How can you not be in a good mood after an intro like that? I was warned this morning that there is a new intro and I've got to try it out. So that's the first time I saw it. And to be honest, I didn't know how long it was going to run. And I got caught grooving to the uh, to the intro before we went live. Who's in chat this morning? Who's uh, who's joining us for the live trading session, live trading floor? Good morning first. Nice and early. Like to see it. Stephen, good morning. Jane, good morning. Graham in the chat as well. Good morning. Good morning. Give me a moment to catch up. We should be joined in the live stream by David from the US shortly, but it is, um, I think it's about four in the morning. So I'm, uh, I'm, my head's all over the place. I just looked at the screen and I was like, Graham? I was like, hang on, have I called myself Graham this morning? Yeah, my head's all over the place. We had quite a day yesterday. If you didn't check out the uh, <laughs> live stream, Stephen, Stephen saying made me jump. Yeah, made me jump as well. When I when I hit that button, I was like, hang on, what's happening here? But um, it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's good to get some energy around it and um, and get ourselves warmed up for the trading day. Wednesday morning, who's pulled the trigger? Who's got some trades? Who left some trades running from last night? Good morning. Good morning, chat. We are, we got, I tell you, we've got a full house here. We've got a, we've got a lot of active, wide wide awake people in chat this morning so tell us what you're trading tell me what you want me to look at murray saying already in a gbp usd trade silver bullet long or short i i'm not sure i completely get the silver bullet um maybe that'd be short right silver bullet just looking at the charts now silver bullet isn't isn't kind of a strong suit i'm looking to get long on the pound we'll bring that up in the trading floor in a minute uh, not seeing much to trade this morning, says Stephen. Well, let's jump straight into the uh, the news calendar then. If we if we can't see too much moving in the charts, I can find Murray saying short GU. I can find. I, I'm sure I can find something in this. So uh, I'll pull the news calendar up, and then what I want to do is I want to kind of touch on what happened yesterday. There's a bit of a uh, a bit of a story that goes along with that. So not just what we saw on stream, not just what we did. There's a little bit of stuff that kind of happened off stream as well. And I want to touch on that stuff. So let's dive into the news calendar. We'll pull this up so we can just get an idea of what's shaking the market today. Graham was saying, Murray short GU. That's the silver bullet, I believe. Graham saying I was looking for a short. I was looking for a long at 125.628. When I see 125, when I see GU at 125, I just, I can't compute it. My brain just thinks 128, 130, 132. I just have this feeling, and this is the problem, I can't quantify it, but I have this feeling that I'm just, that the pound should be a bit stronger against the dollar. So not necessarily going to trade that in terms of a position trade. I'm just going to trade what I see, and I'm going to trade price action as well. Frustrated, I missed a sneaky little short on EU last night while I was sleeping, but we can't catch them all. Uh, EU yesterday. Yeah, EU yesterday. EU yesterday was. Uh, have we got any EU traders in? Can we divert away from what might have happened to me yesterday, or should I say what I done to myself? Not so much about what happened to me, more about what I done to myself. Patrick is in GBPCHF long and Euro JPY short as well. Let's uh, let's buzz through the news calendar. Then let's pull some charts up. That's my. Uh, that's that's what I really really come alive with. So today, Wednesday, third of April. Still not reading UK time at the top here. Problems for another day. So we have core CPI flash estimates year on year. This orange news folder coming out in an hour and a half. So I will be cautious of these. So pretty much imagine these uh, news calendars. You can see at the top, I have the filters somewhere. Mm, maybe I don't. So with these news calendars, pretty much orange, caution. Red, stop. I treat them like traffic lights. So if I'm seeing a red news folder like this one, non-farm employment change today, coming in at 1.15 UK time, I'm going to be getting out of the market. I'm going to be completely adjusting my positions and trading either really, really light or not looking to enter any new positions. So for me personally, I'm going to be a little bit cautious around these news events. 
but when 115 hits, so I'm going to make sure I'm out of market. And I'm curious about this one. This one's a uh, this one's a big one for me. The ISM service PMI for the USD. Now, um, when I've gone back through and looked at this news folder, we can see all these dates where the ISM service PMI has previously hit. And we can go back at these dates and have a look and see how they impacted price movements. For me personally, this one was a bit of a shaker and a bit of a mover. So conscious at 3 p.m. today, we may see some movements in the market, especially on USD pairs. And as I'm more recently learning, USD red news folders affects heavily the um, the DAX as well and EU and GU and whatever else we're trading. But there, anyway, we're uh, good morning, Barry. I'm seeing a lot of friendly faces in here. Uh, Graham is saying, to be honest, I'm not looking at it as an amazing level. I do think it will reject there. Okay. Okay, 125.620A. Let's have a look. Let's uh before we do this, before we do this, let's uh let's get serious. Let's let's take a moment. And I think I need to do this for my own benefits. So yesterday, yesterday, yesterday we were coming into the, the live trading stream and uh, I was 11 for 11 green days. That's 11 consecutive days where I've managed to make a little bit more than I lost. And I, I did this for 11 straight days. And I did this through two bank holidays as well. I'm sure there was there was some trades that were very questionable, but managed to managed to finish up profitable. Now, I guess in, in many ways, that's kind of our, our job as a trader is to try and make a little bit more than we lose. But then we do this thing called trade the likes. And it's where every person that hits the like button on the stream, I will increase my position value by $10,000, which I think on Monday, we um, we ended up with like 93 likes. And so on Tuesday, which was yesterday's stream, I had to trade 9.3 lots, which is like a $930,000 position. Now, for those of you who have been following along with, with kind of my journey, I've been full-time trader for about five, maybe six years, and I'm trading around about three, three and a half lots on stream, and that's okay. That's okay. That's where my uh, my comfort zone is. So Jordan kind of rallied and baited the chat into getting everyone to hit that like button and push that up to 93 likes, which which suddenly put me in a position where I had to execute on a trade and manage that trade around 9.3 lots, which is pretty much around about three times larger than um, what I'm used to. And it kind of, the analysis, for those of you who saw the stream, the analysis was uh, the analysis was good. But the way the trade was managed was uh, not so good. So there's, there's, an, there's a kind of an internal dialogue that goes on with trading where if you decide to suddenly drive faster than your lane or perhaps push the throttle more than you should, we got all this psychology stuff. And I had this question with myself last night. I mean, I bought, G I bought EU and all it did is rally all day. And I had to have this question with myself. And I was like, what would I have done in that trade if I was trading two lots, three lots? If I wasn't trading nearly 10 lots, what would I have done? And um, do you know what? I don't have the answer to it. I don't have the honest answer as to what I would have done in that trade. But it made me question, did I adjust that trade because of the PL? So yesterday I took my first losing day. I actually closed this trade at a bit of a scratch. We took a $200 loss. For those of you who saw what EU done, please don't bully me on it. I know I know what it did. I know it, it didn't hit my stop. I know it kept going and going and going. Would have turned into an absolute monstrous win. I mean, probably upwards of two, if not $3,000. And so there's a part of me that's like, the analysis was good. And then I hear Jordan who says, but as the candles print, you get more information. So surely you want to adjust your trade as you get more information. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pull this up on the screen and we're going to kind of run through this trade from yesterday. Then we'll look to see what's moving now. I can already see on the other terminal I missed my entry uh, on GU. So let's have a look at this. So this is what we were looking at yesterday. We were watching this price down here. And as we started to break up here, I said, I think we're going to see a big move to the upside. and We could very, very easily feel all of this. And here's the trade. Here is the trade. This is, uh, this is what this guy did on stream. This is how he ended his 12 
No, 11 consecutive winning days. I lost yesterday and I lost because of what I did, not the analysis, which is crazy. So this is where I bought. Once we had pushed up, broke this high, we started to retrace. I thought, hey, let's let's get long on this. I think we're going to push higher. Market went really deep. My stop was on this low, and the market decided to print one bullish candle, then pretty much a bullish pin bar. And I thought, we're probably going to reject this area and continue lower. I made the decision with the amount of volume that came in and how deep price went, I made the decision that I need to cut this trade. Uh, so if we pull up the trade history, this is this is uh, this is sad. This is what you see as a trader. This is this is kind of my journey. This is what I'm going through as a trader, and I have to make sure that I'm being objective today. So part of what I'm doing is is I'm kind of doing like a a journal review, if you like, of this trade in front of everyone to sort of manage my emotions before I come into the trading day because I believe today. Everyone turned up yesterday and we hit 84 likes yesterday. So I'm going to be trading 8.4 lots today. Not quite as big as the 9.3, but 8.4, again, still pretty massive relative to what I like to trade. And look at this. If we can say that we had 9.4 lots on this entry, stop was on this low. I think it was around about 10 pips. And the market just went and went and went and went. I mean, Pretty much at this peak, the trade would have been about $4,000 in profit. And this is where I have to manage my emotions and say, forget about what could have been. Look at what you did. Why did I cut this trade? Why did I cut this trade? It's easy to say in hindsight why I cut this trade. But let's zoom in just a little bit to the five minute. And I hate to say it, I was looking at the one minute. And I looked at this market pulled back, filled my entry. This is where I bought all like stalled and I thought this is where we're going market sold off again came all the way back and I thought okay price went a little deeper came all the way back this is where the selling happened previously and the market continued its move lower and as it started to pull back I thought we we probably don't break this area or this area so I was acting with more information about the market and the market just said, Rich, we don't care about what you do. We're just going to go. And it did stall. It took a little while to grind through this. And then when it broke and closed above this high, oh, wow. Oh, wow, did it go to the races. So, yeah, a little bit sad about that yesterday, but managing my risk, managing my, um, my, my trades, because I have to manage risk. Taking a full loss on this, we can see we're, we're only up $1,200 on the account, 13, sorry, at the bottom here. Um, taking a $900 loss is going to put a big dent in these profits because we're trading bigger size now. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. That's what I'm, uh, that's what I was conscious of yesterday. And I cannot answer the question. Would I have stayed in this trade if I only had two or $300 risk on this low? Would I have said, well, my stop loss is there for a reason because it tells me more information about the market. If you hit my stop, I can already tell you, if you hit my stop down here, I'm already going to be looking for a pullback and a sell to continue the market lower. And it didn't come. It did not come. So this is what I'm dealing with today. So I've got to manage my emotions. I've got to manage my expectations. I've got to reset as a trader and say yesterday was yesterday's news. Today is today's news. And we're, uh, we're starting the day with a bit of a bang. So this is what we're looking for on GU yesterday. Looking for the market to break this high. Here, break this high, come back, retest this level. What do we do? We broke this high in a beautiful way. And I put this little box and said, this is where I'm going to be a buyer if price comes back. Price didn't come back until after the stream. This is what I was looking for, big push up. Obviously, I don't know when the move is going to happen, but effectively, I was looking for the market to come back, retest this level, and then go from here as well. So nice to see that price did it. Um, we just couldn't time it within the time that we're trading on stream as well. So, uh, yeah, and uh, I can I can tell you already, I was trying to long this, and I believe, oh, that's so sad. My entry was missed by, my entry was here. Right, let me pull this order over on this terminal, then we're going to get into the trading floor, and I'm going to catch up on chat, because there's one thing I do incredibly well, and that's, that's overly focused on the chart. So I need to apologize for that. So what we got, what we got in chat. So Graham is, uh, I want to just touch on this first. Graham said 125. I wonder if I was trying to trade from this. 
let's put a level on the chart. You were saying 125, 628. 125, 6. No way. You, oh, mate, you got filled. No way. All right, 125.628, it seems that Graham has bought the market here. Uh, we weren't looking at the charts when Graham put this on. Uh, I was looking for a long, but, but it just missed the level. Interesting. So I'm curious whether or not it just missed the level or whether you actually took the trade. I'm curious. For me personally, I wanted to be buying a little bit lower, and I wasn't filled on the trade. So uh, I'm not sure if I want it at the moment. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. I'm going to keep seeing what the market does on that. Let me just catch up on chat. You were USD yesterday. Yeah. It's, what what can I do, right? What can I do? So I'm going to be executing today on 8.4 lots, I believe. 8.4. That's what I'm going to be executing on today. I need to manage my risk on 8.4. So before I chart this up, before I kind of look and see what I can find today for a trade, I just want to take a moment and introduce my man all the way from the US of A. David, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, I am doing much better now than I was about half hour ago, 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. Uh, just got my power back on here about five minutes ago. We've got some, uh, some pretty terrific rainstorms coming through the area. Um, and apparently the infrastructure here in South Jersey is a little sketch because I was because <laughs> I was out of power for the last little bit. But uh, yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is stable uh, and I can manage to uh, <laughs> make it through, uh, make it through the rest of the uh, uh, the morning here with you guys, um, you know, because I was excited to be here uh, this morning, um, you know, because uh, trading such a huge lot size for you uh must have been uh quite the adventure i managed to catch a, a bit of the stream um and i'm sure that people have mentioned it to you uh, i know that it was posted in the uh in the discord um <laughs> and i i was feeling for you i was feeling for you so you know depending on uh, uh what uh, depending on what we get into today I, I think it would be a fun discussion to talk about uh you know, you mentioned this even before the trade, how nervous you were about taking it yeah. and yeah. and uh, and 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 it manifested itself in a big way, uh, which makes all the sense in the world. Um, and yeah. I think it, all of us as traders have been there before where, um, you know, we we uh, are trading with an uncomfortable size mm -hmm. and it causes weird, uncharacteristic uh, reactions. Yeah. And you were just happy enough to take the loss where you took it. And then, you know, you come back to the chart later and you're like, oh, I, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, but no, uh, really, really good today. Uh, markets were moving yesterday um, mm -hmm. off some numbers, um, you know, there in the U.S. So, uh, you know, over there in the U.S. stream, we were kind of uh, experiencing a, a bit of, uh, uh, call it some whiplash a little bit back and forth, trying to figure out what the markets wanted to do. Uh, I think both and Aaron and I were looking for buys. Uh, they manifested themselves about, I don't know, an hour after the stream uh, where you were able to kind of get in some, on some levels and, and buy a bit, um, which I managed to catch a little bit. But then after that, I ended up uh, hanging out with the nephew uh, and uh, made some orange ice cream towards the end of the day. So that was a lot of fun. No, so that's you. You. This is why. This is why you weren't here first thing this morning, right? All the sugar from the orange. Uh, you. You were pretty much up all night, just like buzzing because of all the <laughs> sugar. Right? A sugar high. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was thinking to myself. I'm like, uh, my last house uh, in Indiana. I would say the number of times that I have actually experienced a power outage in the 17 years that I lived there. Mm -hmm. was once for 45 minutes and here i am three months into this place i'm like here's my oh, first man. one hopefully it's not a sign of things to come eh? oh i hope not goodness gracious no, i'm sure it'll be fine well if david disappears in the middle of the stream we know we know why but so quick update what we've done is we've just kind of taken a moment to just step through that eu trade yesterday we have touched on the idea that i'm sizing up it's going to take me a moment to uh, to reflect on this. I mean, yeah, sure, I've been trading for a number of years now, but to go from three lots to nine lots overnight, I still think technically it was a good cut. 
but I will never know what I would have done had it been three lots or two lots. And that's that's the difference. What I'm what I'm seeing here is, you know, when we pull up the history on this account, what I'm seeing here is this reoccurring theme that I'm just not letting the winners run. Like so many of these trades could have easily, easily been four figure wins, easily. But I'm just not letting them run. And um, that was absolutely most present on this last trade as well. I mean, we measured from high to low. I can tell you I would have sold EU again a little bit later. Probably wouldn't have held this to it, but the price would have sold eventually when this hit. This would have been a $4,000 trade. Um, Got to get used to it. I'm going to take losses that are going to be four figures on this account if I'm trading close to 10 lots. I mean, if, if chat keeps turning up every day and hitting that like button, my lot size will increase. I've got to get used to this. And so when these $1,000 losses come, I'm going to have to have these $1,000 wins. Can't keep getting scared and cutting my trades at, um, you know, small amounts. And I like what Bettina said here. It's, uh, I empathize with you. A sudden increase in lot size can definitely affect your psychology and trade management as well. Um, so I'm I'm really proud of myself to be able to say, hey, there's more information and I want to close this trade because, because the market's communicating something a bit more to me than before I pulled the trigger on the trade. Not many of my trades that go all the way nice and deep towards the stop loss end up being winners. And I know that through my track record. So I had more information, huge amounts of volume coming against me. And I said, you know what? I, I, I believe there's less than a 50% chance now that this trade is going to push up into profit. And I think it's going to be probably 60% I'll take a full loss. So I've got an opportunity to take a 2 250 loss here and save the account for another day. So that's kind of what I was thinking yesterday. I think technically it was okay. But what I'd want to do is have a history of recording what I did versus set and forget for years and years and years, hundreds of trades. If I could do that, when Jordan turns around and says, Rich, if you see more information, why wouldn't you adjust your trade? I'd be able to present him this beautiful spreadsheet and say, because this is my business plan. And my business plan clearly communicates to me that I make more when I click buy or click sell, put my stock in a place that's sensible, and then go and play chess with the cats or whatever it is. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's very thought. interesting that you mentioned that. And so when you talk chess about uh, obtaining uh, the chasing cats, yes, no, <laughs> uh, when you're talking about your data and what it typically tells you, right, and you have to marry that up to how you manage your trade. I know for myself, uh, my trades, based off of where my stops usually are, don't survive huge drawdown um, in terms of the way that I that I trade. Now I'm trading off a three minute chart, right? So uh, typically for like uh, what I tip, uh, what I typically trade on the equity side of things. And so looking at that and saying, okay, if it goes into drawdown right away, it typically doesn't go near my stop and then goes back up and, and goes into profit. Usually mine go into profit pretty quick. I get a, a couple uh, of beak wetters and then and then I typically get stopped out on the last portion of it because I'm holding the rest of it for like a, you know, something like a one to six R or better trade um, mm -hmm. on the last portion of it. And I've already executed one to one, possibly one to two or one, even even one to three R on the rest of the position. So it does tell me that typically. So I can't empathize with the fact that you were like, you know what? I suffered through all this drawdown uh, and it's probably going to go back to where I entered. Um, and because of where I entered and not necessarily uh, because of where it's been, I think mm -hmm. I'm going to cut it here because I got in and it didn't move in the way that I thought uh, that it was going to move. And you know what? You just you, you do have to kind of take that new account and uh, move on from that. Yeah. And, and I've got to remind myself it's one trade. Is, is, I think if every time we and, – and I do, Barry, I hear what you're saying about, you know, I don't think if you're comfortable with that size, um, that it can affect and be damaging to the confidence. Absolutely. There's there's this other side to say, but if you enter into an environment and it's a scary environment, if we run away every time just because we had a, a, a negative experience, and we'll say negative, are we going to grow? Are we going to grow from that? Now, even with that size on the account, I was objective enough to say, 
I think price action is going to do this. So I don't think it was the worst technical management in the world. I just can't account for what I would have done if I was trading round about the regular size. So one thing I'm I'm incredibly grateful for, and I do hear I do hear you for that. And I, I genuinely like I really appreciate you having my back on that. When it comes to me trading my personal accounts, as as Anna says so wonderfully, and I do wonder up for it, she says, I'm the boss of my trading. I really enjoy that I'm able to size those and and manage the risk according to the way that makes me comfortable. And the proof will be in the pudding. I mean, one day we'll be able to pull up the equity curve on this stream account and we'll be able to pull up the equity curve on the personal accounts. And you've got to understand the differences here. So the the stream account, we're coming on, we're having some of the some of the lot size allocated. I've got a window to try and find a trade. And then on the personal accounts, I've got the entire trading day to be organized to execute on my trades at exactly the price I want to size the trade as I feel comfortable. And so one of these is going to be massive with hope. One of these is going to be massively better for a trader. And the other one is going to be a, a growing opportunity and an opportunity to sort of share and show charts and, and what have you. So I would say that this, well, this account isn't my master account, isn't copied to my trading accounts. I want to keep them separate, but this is a fantastic opportunity to level up in a way that if it all goes absolutely sideways, it is only a small reflection of me as a trader. It's not the entirety uh, or in the entire reflection as well. So definitely something to uh, to be mindful there that, you know, these, these results purely are not the thing that I think defines me as a trader. Gives me feedback. Definitely gives me feedback as uh, as yesterday. I'd love to come in today and be like 12 for 12 green days, $2,000 win yesterday. I mean, who wouldn't want to come in and do that? But I I still think technically it was a good trade. I, I do. I do genuinely think it was uh, managed well. I think the entry was okay. GU missed the entry and rallied. EU didn't quite. And I think had GU caught the entry and rallied, um wherever it was yesterday i can't remember where it was yesterday but that's that's the kind of thing with my trading i don't marry my trades i just i have a technical analysis i look to get in see if i can get a, a quick move out of the market and get paid but i still think that we've got upside i still think we're going to come up here and pull this so looking at this today we've already came taken the low of this asian session and printed nicely bullish now this candle's getting wiped out pretty quick now i was trying to trade from this zone down here this is what i was trying to do i was trying to trade from this zone down here now i've got a i still think i still think this makes for a good buy and at the moment i'm going to want to be trading and getting out from these highs or i'm going to want to be selling from these highs so this this is what my interest is on at the moment in the markets is either looking to buy this low and if we pull up the eight point, let's uh, let's have a look. Let's see what we've got here. Eight point four. So let's say I put my stop down on this low. This is ideally this is where I'd like my stop. And if we put in eight point four, this is what I'm seeing. Two thousand dollars to risk. Oh, I don't really want to be risking two thousand dollars today. So I want my stop on this low because we had a lot of buying interest down here. We pulled back and we see a continuation. I believe we could easily come and run into this level before finding a bit of buying interest. Now, there's a good chance that the market could bounce from around about here. And I put my stop there. But the problem is with my stop here, it doesn't show me that I'm wrong about my bullish bias because we still have this significant low. And if price takes this low, then I believe buyers just gave up on price. So this is trading mid-range. I can make an argument for it, but optimally, I want this down here. I can tell you what I'd do on a personal account. I would have my stop wider. I would break my orders into two. I'd have one entry on this low, and I'd have an entry at this top, and I'd have a nice wide stop. And I would genuinely be seeing if we can test and break these highs. So that's that's what I'm looking for on GU at the moment. Not going to pull the trigger on it. Uh, David, are you uh, you found anything in the forex market? I mean, David, the, the so I am. I'm, you know, as you were talking through it, I'm looking at. I was looking at GU. I'm looking at that and saying, I want I want more information after this candle close. Uh, in terms of uh, 
you know, we, we just got this close on this 15 minute. We're printing another 15 minute candle. I think you can get this on a little bit of a sell. And, and, and I think you can get this in cheaper. So you're not risking quite as much. I think you can get a more favorable entry um, so that you can kind of lean on that level a little bit. Um, and you're and, and and in terms of what you're thinking, I do agree, right? The bigger level is down towards that uh, those those lows that you last highlighted that that super long period of consolidation um, that was like pretty much uh, the levels from like uh, April Fools. So so for Monday, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're looking at levels from there, and you're like, okay, I know I'm wrong, and this is where buyers have given up, but because we're uh, because we've we're trading kind of in the middle a little bit i think i think you can you can get this on sale a little bit get yourself a little bit more information and i agree i think that you want to get out before the uh you know as we uh retest those highs there mm -hmm. if you get in now and you're looking to you know uh, have your stop on on that low now i don't concentrate on r and i know that your stream account is different than your actual account mm -hmm. uh, but you would be, you know, your your potential on this trade because you want to put your stop down there is, uh, you know, unfavorable, right? In terms of risk to reward, uh, you'd be risking two thousand dollars if you got out at the highs there. You're probably going to be just shy of that. Yeah. Um, so that yeah. that is a, a bit interesting there. So I think you need a bit more information, and you're probably going to have to do do what old Billy does, right? And get into a smaller time frame and snipe those entries. You know, <laughs> it talks about. Uh, William always talks about trying to get in, you know, he's looking at like a four hour chart and then he's going to get on a 15 second chart and then snipe those entries. I kid, I kid, but you're going to have to find confirmation. However, you can find confirmation, um, you know, be it a chart pattern, be it, you know, uh, be it whatever that tells you that, yeah, we're going to respect these levels and we can push up from there, retest the highs. Um, and if you can get in there, retest those highs, not experience a lot of drawdown and then get the heck out of the way because we are actually moving down. Then, yep. then I'll be better for you. Uh, in terms of uh, my outlook on, on on what's typically apparently been my favorite uh, EU, um, I would say that that one looks a little trickier this morning. Um, I'll pull up my charts here and talk through EU. Uh, we're kind of doing the same thing, but right now we're just in the middle of this, right? Uh, and so... Um, you know, we did just have, you know, a really strong bullish uh, candle. Uh, what was this about half hour ago? Um, so uh, had I had power, I would have bought this right at 330, somewhere around here, kind of leaning on these lows here. And then seeing that we could, if, if we could kind of push back to this price action and retest this high, uh, I've already missed that entry. So at this point, if it comes back down and retests these lows, I don't want anything to do with it as long mm -hmm. as long side. And then I would be looking for a, I'd be looking for some sort of short entry because we wiped out, you know, some pretty pronounced that this is the strongest bullish candle uh, that we've seen uh, in over 24 hours. Right. So I, I would say that if this gets wiped out by selling pressure, I don't necessarily want to be involved uh, mm -hmm. right away on the long side. So both of these are leaning by. I think uh, I think GU is providing a little bit of a uh, a little bit better of a setup because we're we're close to the lows and we've already kind of wiped out that last 15 minute candle. So um, what I told you about buying being able to probably get this cheaper, uh, I, I guess uh, everybody heard me and jumped into this trade and they're taking this back up to the long side. Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go at this. I think I think I'm gonna have a go at this. So we're coming up to this area now. This is. Um, let me just let me just pop this on, and we'll we'll have this order just sitting here, just just in case price kind of gets a little bit closer to where I want. But I'll uh, I'll put it here just for a sec. Six hundred and fifty fives. Okay, let me just click this and get this pending, and I'll tell you why. So, if we're looking at the structure of the market, what we've got is this bullish pressure that's coming in, and the market has come up and created this high. And, and gotten everyone interested in, hey, we're going higher. We're going to break out higher. We're going to push higher. I, that's how I would read it. And then what the market's done is come down. And what it should have done, in my mind, is pushed from here and continued bullish. And it didn't do that. It pulled back and went lower. Now, just before it pulled back, we saw some selling interest here. Now, what I'm looking at, because we've broken lower here, 
I'm seeing this head and shoulders pattern. I'm seeing a potential left shoulder here. This is a little bit unreliable because it's where the market closed and opened. So spreads may have pushed price around. But I'm liking all these highs here with confluence that this is where the sellers decided to push lower. So I'm, uh, we, we could make an argument for it down here. We could say, hey, Rich, you've got a left shoulder here. We've got a head, an inverse head. Push up. Didn't quite break before we come back tested. Oscillated around, come back and test it again. I think I might have missed this move to low. So, but I, it would make sense in my mind for the market to potentially breathe into this level and see a little bit more selling interest. And I can manage risk okay around this um, at 655. Now, the reason why I'm not going high is check out this. If price breaks this level, yeah. Why on earth do yeah? Why on earth do I want to be a seller into this? And yeah. we can look at Euro USD, and this is what happened yesterday when price broke, kind of you know where we were fighting for agreement of price, if you like. Market yep. broke, and then it just said, "We that's it." It's like, <laughs> it's and yeah, it, it's and enough it's to turn around, right? And it's holding up near the highs, right? Um, you know, so I think in terms of uh, uh, EU. Um, you know, you could look at that and say, yeah, you've got a lot of upward pressure, a lot of upward momentum on the price of it. Right. But you yeah. can get into you can get yourself into uh, probably a, a, a little bit of uh, you can find ways to get into a short um, mm -hmm. and use that resistance. Uh, you know, it's not going to hold forever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it may it, it may hold again uh, in and around those prices, uh, retest a little bit lower. Um, you know, you are counter trend. So if when you, whenever you're trading counter trend, um, you know, look at your expectancy and make sure that your expectancy is in a place that makes sense, right? Uh, a lot of times what I happen to do uh, on whatever I'm trading uh, stocks or whatnot, um, you know, I'll sit there placing a trade expecting because and I'll sit there and say, you know what, I'd like to make $1,500 on this trade. And then mm -hmm. guess what? the trade isn't there to make $1,500 on based off yeah. the side that I'm trading, yeah. right? You know, instead the, the trade is like, hey, yeah, that's pretty good entry for a scalp short. That's pretty good entry for a scalp long. Uh, you're not hitting a home run off of this because that's not what price action is telling you, right? So, um, you know, always know if you're trading counter trend because you're a reversion trader, right? And it's yeah. not oscillating the same amount of price, you know, the same price, you know, from the highs to the lows and vice versa. Um, know what the expectancy expectancy is if the trend continues on GU and EU over the past day, right? Mm -hmm. We have the same reaction in the markets. Mm -hmm. Just know if you're short, we mm -hmm. are making higher highs and higher higher lows on a longer time frame, i.e., the past couple of days, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and I'll bring my charts up here just to kind of say, okay, you know, I'm looking at a 15 minute chart, right? These are the lows we sold off. Got it right. The, the most recent price action: higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So you are pushing back up, trying to recover price. G uh, EU's kind of already done that, right? To this yeah. Price level. yeah, we've already kind of come up here. We've double tested it here. Now, <laughs> if it comes back up here again, and you you really believe in the rule of threes, you want to be careful shorting up here again because if we're going to recover this price action, we're probably breaking through. But but. You can get in here on a really tight entry and a really tight stop and know that you're and and get out, you know, maybe put your stop to here and say, you know what, I'm not going to deal with all this. You got all of this defending you on an mm -hmm. EU short, all yeah. of the price action. Yeah. You've got this as a backstop. So you can sit there and say, OK, if we get back up here, you know, I could reenter, reenter short in around these prices. Use yeah. having this as a backstop. Again, support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't want to put your stop way up here, you've got all this, all this here, and you can find out if you're wrong, or you can find out if it's not necessarily your style of trade uh, to, mm -hmm. to trade this. But EU's kind of recovered that price action. GU has not. So if you're entering in the GU shorts, uh, I'm clicking on. There we go. If you're entering in the GU shorts, right? You know, you've already acknowledged this that price action is going to be up here. So you lean on this high, hopefully it retraces, gives you a little bit of money and then kind of pushes, pushes down for you, uh, pays you before it takes your money. Um, and any trade in all trading, right? Um, I think that the key is, is like, let me get paid first before the yeah. market takes 
money. Like you pay me, go ahead and take somebody else's money because price will move there eventually uh, where your stop was sitting. It's just you don't want it to do it while you're while your <laughs> stop is personally there. Well, that was what I was looking for yesterday on EU. You you were pointing it out. It was it was actually this. It was if we go and look at this. Look at look at I mean simple supply and demand trading. The market just said we're going to hit the throttle here absolutely going to send it to the short side and continue to the low side as well well to me this is like a fantastic area if i was if i was streaming and this the market moved up to this price point where the market said see ya i'm i'm going to be sitting here and i'm going to be anticipating that sellers want to get involved again it's Mm -hmm. structure there's nothing crazy about this supply and demand trading i mean don't get me wrong they overcomplicate it probably don't need to but i i can tell you this when i said like i was kind of sad when it come to the market i would have sold this here i would have been a seller again here but like david said rule of three how many times do we think this zone will hold but if we look at gu on the hourly this is still bearish we've got to go a long way before we start breaking structure to the yeah. downside and my bias starts to change. So I'm just looking for small moves from levels to levels. So two things I want to touch on. Number one, today we will be giving away an account from our sponsors, the five percenters. We're going to give this away in live stream. But what I need from you guys is I need a keyword. I need a word that's going to be the word that I'm going to use to give it away. Now, keep it PG. But the funniest word that's mentioned in chat, I'm just going to go ahead with that. My brain's a little foggy today. I can't, I can't think of a word. So give me something that's just humorous, mildly humorous. Don't go too crazy. Ideally, sort of, you know, one, one kind of word or a string of one words. No hashtags, no spaces. Put it in chat. If that's the word I pick, it's already going to get your head. That will be your entry into the live account giveaway. So while that's cooking, David, you were streaming yesterday with Aaron on the US stream. How did your stream go? uh it went really well um you know i think both aaron and i ended the stream green i traded smaller size yesterday because i did not have a good i i, I felt like i didn't uh um i didn't necessarily uh, have a good feeling on what the markets were doing right um i was looking at specifically at tesla and I, <laughs> as i'm talking about tesla tesla goes through a 10 uh i pull up the chart i'm not even kidding uh, you can go back and rewatch it. it happened live on stream. I sat there and said, all right. Yeah. One of the things I'm looking at is Tesla 173. I pull up the chart. The thing is tanking. It is tanking. It is down to like 165, 164. I'm like, what the heck is happening? It formed this bearish five minute candle as I'm talking about it. I'm like, did I like uh, whatever the opposite of the Midas touch? I felt like I had that on Tesla. I had no idea why, why it was falling off. Turns out that uh, news had come out that their sales were about like 9% uh, nine percent less than the previous year and some other sales numbers that they had released. And, um, you know, obviously investors were, were not necessarily or the market at, in, at large was, was were not necessarily impressed by that. And we ended up kind of, uh, you know, selling off quite a bit. Um, and then I thought to myself, that's a really aggressive move. Um, uh, to the downside. So I found myself trading it to the long side, but I was trading it with smaller size because I didn't know what the news was at the time. And I wanted to make sure that uh, like I was getting comfortable with the market before I, uh, uh, before I executed on that, but no, all in all the stream went well, uh, ended, ended green on the stream. Um, uh, we are, uh, we're buying the DAX. Is that what we're doing? I, I figured I was going to put a little sneaky order in there. I like I like what price is doing. Don't let me stop you. We'll we'll go into this analysis in a minute. Uh, we were, uh, yeah, no. So we were, uh, you know, I was very happy with my trading, um, you know, and it was it like I was basically forward testing execution, make sure I still had it right, like uh, on a smaller time frame. So it was like quick scalps for about 50, 60 cents uh, per share, and just kind of pushing price up a little bit. Uh, and then kind of leaving the, uh, the rest of it at break even if I catch a runner I did if I didn't mm -hmm. then I got stopped out for the rest of it and just kind of minimizing that so um <laughs> forcing a trade today Sasquatch is coming coming for you uh but yeah no uh it was definitely a good streak uh a a uh, a good stream yesterday Bjorn asks uh what what's the clock for David like three in the morning yes so when the stream goes live typically 
Um, it is 3.30 in the morning. So as it stands right now, it is 4.15 in the morning here on the east coast of the United States. And at least in South Jersey, it is thundering and lightning and raining. And I had power outages this morning. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, Trade Delicious, uh, they didn't they didn't buy me a generator to uh, kind of keep as a backup. <laughs> to, to, I'm like, guys, I got I got a Trade Delicious stream, okay? Uh, you know, I can't necessarily convince a South Atlantic uh, Electric or whoever the heck this company is. But like, you need to make sure that my power is good because I have Trade Delicious streams. Uh, and uh, but, oh boy, uh, uh, why do you hate sleep? <laughs> I went to bed fairly early yesterday. Actually, I, I was I was like, uh, Rich and I were were chatting a bit yesterday afternoon his last night and then yeah. not too much after him i was i was like i was going to bed myself i uh, had to finish making the ice cream and then drop the nephew off um and then uh yeah i, I don't necessarily hate street and, and and truth be told here's what's going to happen uh i'm gonna debrief with rich after the stream we're gonna congratulate congratulate each other on how awesome rich is how fabulous of a host he is how how amazing it is the, the london stream uh, ha has just kind of blown up and how he's going to have to trade with at least, I don't know, seven, eight lots tomorrow, whatever that actually looks like, <laughs> um, you know, and then after that, I'm going to go back to bed. I'm going to take a little bit of a nap and then I'm going to wake up for the uh, U.S. markets um, and see what the U.S. markets have in store. Uh, we have a data heavy week over there in the U.S. So every day we're going to get some sort of number. Uh, the market's going to kind of jostle around and, and reposition off of that. Uh, all the way leading all the way up into Friday where we have non-farm payrolls. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're getting beat up by data, um, uh, there in the U S and you know what, I'll complain that we have too much data. I'll complain that we have nothing happening in the markets. You know, we just live to complain. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you just have to take that in the perspective and know where yeah. you're at, um, and, uh, trade accordingly. David, you were saying that we were talking yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't say what we we're talking about, did you? I just want to double check this. Don't go into it. Don't go into it. Just, just yes or no. Did you, did you, did you say what we were talking about in, in too much detail? I don't think you did. No. no. Okay. Okay. So speed round. You have thirty seconds in chat to guess what David and I were talking about yesterday specifically. We were touching on something that was just completely, completely random. If you get it right, I'll buy you an account myself. You, if you get this, I'll be genuinely shocked. I'll be so impressed. I'll buy. Oh, you yeah. An no, that was pretty interesting. Yeah. I you don't got thirty know. seconds. Very, if you very can catch hard. It, um, I found out something new about David that I didn't know, and we shared something in common. Not quite, not exactly, but you know, we were able to have a, we were able to have a conversation <laughs> on it. But uh, <laughs> nature says, "How to win, uh, stop me from winning, uh, uh, winning giveaways?" Stephen says, "McDonald's." No, <laughs> no, that's not right. Uh, what, home, what's I... Barry cross dressing? Absolutely not. Um, no, That's we were not hilarious. talking about cross dressing, not last night, at least. Anyway, um, <laughs> <even she's> the... <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no, I find it cute. That's not the first time. Uh, uh, no, no faith based talk. Oh my god, although you might need faith for what we were talking about. Um, yeah, sorry, a little last bit. Last seconds, though. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. No one got it today. It was, I'm, I'm kind of glad. I don't really want to be buying someone an account immediately. So David and I were having a conversation yesterday, and I found out that David is a keen aviator enthusiast. David flies planes. Genuinely, David from the London stream, who streams on the US stream, flies Cessna airplanes. And it's, it's has got hours and hours and hours in the in, in the pilot seat. So we were having a chat yeah. about that. and. Uh, it was oh uh, fascinating. Paul, uh, Paul you, you, uh, like, I love motorcycles. I also have my motorcycle endorsement. I used to own a motorcycle, um, and then I, I, I didn't have time for the maintenance anymore. I'm telling you, like, my brain is so scattered. Like, I have all these <laughs> varying interests. And then he had mentioned, he had said something earlier, like, like, beans on toast. Bro, I don't get this beans on toast thing. I think that was it was a keyword suggestion. He uh, on toast. We weren't talking about be uh, we, we weren't talking about beans on toast. Um, you know, uh, other than like, why would you do that? Because I've tried, I've tried uh, um, uh, 
English beans, the English Heinz beans that 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 are uh, that are out there. Um, and uh, let me tell you, uh, you need more than toast. You need more than toast. Now, I'll, I'll eat like a full English. I think, uh, you know, I've had that conversation where like there's a lot of stuff kind of floating about in there. But but yeah, baked beans in the uh, UK versus uh, baked beans in the States. A uh, little bit different. Uh, Steven saying, uh, I fly uh, Microsoft Flight Sims, if that counts. Uh, brother, me too. You and me both. Uh, I, that's why I started. It started there. Uh, and then it, it moved to a game called uh, DCS. It's called, uh, it's short for uh, Digital Combat Simulator. And okay. that thing, it, it's gnarly. It is so gnarly. Wait, I mean, hang I was... on, David, David are, you, are you at the maturity level where, where you're not trying to flip Boeing 747s and doing the 360 loop? Because to be honest, I, come on, I, am, I, am, I am. No, 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 I am definitely. Uh, right. Because uh, I think when you're That's at the control of the plane, you start learning about things. You're like, oh, this plane cannot do that. And I'm not that guy. Um, you, you, I think you gain, uh, and we mentioned it before, you gain a deeper appreciation of those who do it professionally, right? Mm. Because you understand everything that goes into it. You start digging in a little bit. You're like, they're not just up there pushing buttons. You know, uh, they, they have to be able to fly the plane. Uh, you know, both takeoff and landing. Uh, they're typically hand flying those things as well. Um, you know, uh, and and so yeah, I, I have a deeper uh, respect uh, for for that. Hey, we've got a question here. This is a super interesting yeah. one, David. Very good I'll, question. Go for it. Go. Right. Start with this. This is a this is a really good question. It's not just all about trading. Got to keep that life balance. So, Sir Richard, Sir David, or or Richard, Sir Richard, David. Uh, no, wait. Get it out, Rich. Rich, what is happening? Uh, it's because this train is getting really close to filling. So we've got Rich, Sir David. So how do you enjoy your free time besides trading? Video games or something like that? Um, that's an awesome question. That's a that's a, a free really question. I have a pretty epic uh, Steam catalog. Um, and if you guys don't know what Steam is, it's like a video game hosting uh, site. And there, I, I probably have over like a hundred uh, and at least 110 games. I would say uh, video games is one. Um, uh, it, it, it's very interesting. Uh, when I don't have a lot of time, I like to do that. As the weather breaks here in the U.S., you know, we're getting into springtime here. Uh, golf is another hobby of mine, uh, and that allows me to kind of get out in nature uh, and then just kind of step back and say, you are terrible at something. It's okay to be terrible at something. Golf, golf tells me a lot about myself, just like trading does. Um, you know, and then again, like, you know, once I'm done with my weekly review, right, if I do it Friday, um, I'm either going to do it Friday right after the trading week um, or I'm going to do it Sunday right before Monday. But either way, my weekends are my weekends. And so what I would say is like in my off time when I'm spending time with family, when I'm spending time with, uh, you know, with friends, that's really what I'm doing. And I'm not necessarily doing that. I do it to a smaller degree during the day, uh, like day to day. But I would say that, yeah, between golf, uh, golf, aviation, um, and uh, hanging out with uh, uh, family and some video games kind of mixed in there. That's pretty much all I've got time for in terms of the relaxation. front. Yeah, I'm curious, what, what do you guys do in chat? Like to tell you, give us give some ideas, give some feedback. I mean, if there's something that you're doing, um, I'm always looking to to fill the the free time I have with extra stuff. At the moment, it's uh, I mean, I used to enjoy enduro riding, so motorbike riding, green lanes, byways, you know, trail riding, stuff like that. Um, bit of a bit of a dangerous sport, but love getting out and and just being outside, socializing with friends and doing that. Don't get an opportunity to do it as much as as I'd like, and plus. It takes its toll on your body when you go out and you do a hundred miles off road on a motorbike, and it's you know all the bumps and bruises and stuff like that. But much the same as yourself, David. Just um, I'm I'm, uh, I'm partial to uh, playing a bit of bit of uh, PC games um, or games on the PC. The problem is, I like to play creative games and come up with unorthodox ways of playing them, which typically is what we call like off meta, and it it just is another way to just get reported and and. Have a load of people playing. Oh. You're playing a champion in a in a role that shouldn't be played, or you're playing the game unorthodoxly. It's, I love to get creative, and if I can uh, find, I, I don't like games like uh, Call of Duty, where you've just got a gun and you just got to run through the game, and it's like the game kind of plays itself. I like the game where you're just like um, 
survival games. You, your your character just appears I on love the it. Yeah, I love it. You like, you got to figure out how yeah. to eat, poop, and like uh, go to the grocery store, all kinds of stupid stuff. Yeah, no, I, I like strategy games. I like survival games. Uh, you know, games that really just capture my capture my my imagination, and I just kind of lean lean into it a little bit. Uh, Call of Duty. I used to be a big Call of Duty person, but not the not the campaign. I have several editions of Call of Duty that I purchased. I didn't even pay attention to those things. I literally, I I, I bought the game is only for the multiplayer, only for yeah. the multiplayer, and it was just like clockwork. Like it was like a second job. I get off yeah. work and then I play Call of Duty, and then I go to bed, <laughs> and then I, I wake up, go to work, come back, Call of Duty. Oh my goodness, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had to quit playing that because it turned into a second job. I'm like, oh boy. I knew, uh, you know, I, I knew the people that I played with. I, I had a team. I had friends that I played with. Never seen in my entire life. I think that's the beautiful thing about like, like, like being in an environment like that. Like you, you got on with a group of people that enjoyed about the same thing and were, were able to kind of, uh, you know, t push everything aside, right? Whatever you felt about life, this, that, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever your opinions were on that, it didn't matter. You guys just knew that you wanted to play Call of Duty together. So it's, uh, 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 kind of, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a good thing for that. G getting asked a question, uh, look energetic this morning, David, do you sleep early to wake up for the stream or is coffee helping or do you take naps in the day? All of the above, all of the above. Um, typically no coffee in the, I won't drink coffee right now, uh, for the London streams. It's usually just a little bit of, uh, um, I actually have a, uh, carbonated water, um you know for you know just have something to drink because if you're streaming you don't have anything to drink uh your your mouth gets dry really quick and then you, you kind of you're gonna you're gonna be suffering um so typically but typically no coffee first thing in the morning coffee when i actually wake up for the day uh i may take a nap after this uh the reason i'm energetic is because i'm looking forward to being here with everybody i actually do look forward to this and i have a little bit of experience of waking up stupid early um and being up all day and you know uh towards the end of my career i had to be uh the uh, i had to be the guy that was happy about being awake and motivating others to be awake so easy for me to get up out of bed uh get ready in the mornings uh it's just unfortunately that i think that's probably gonna be the rest of my life where it's easy for me to get up early in the morning and uh you know and harder for me to stay up uh later at night but no it's uh Primarily because I'm just excited to be here with you guys. I'm excited to, you know, I'm not an experienced Forex trader. I dabbled in it a little bit uh, uh, and I couldn't understand it as well. Um, and until I understand it more so, like why price moves, what this does and that does, um, you know, uh, it, it, this is an opportunity for me to, to learn uh, while I have executed trades on uh, equities and you know, I've been trading for about the past five years um, and have experienced in that world. Price moves differently over here. So these this is a different style of trade for me. Um, you know, I'm used to things moving a lot more quickly uh, in uh, equities land than they do here. Uh, so, you know, this is just an opportunity to develop another training style and learn from you guys as much as you guys learn from me. I'll just say um, t there's two things I want to touch on. So, Yana saying love woodworking clears the mind i can imagine i love watching wood uh wood turning videos where you put them on a lathe and you just see these big logs just spinning around they make these beautiful kind of um vases from them and stuff like that always always being creative around stuff like that as well and honestly last last thing uh i love doing hiking getting out and just going for a walk last year we did a 15 and a half uh mile hike for charity and it was fantastic it was really really good to just clear the mind, getting get away from from the real world, and just just go up to the uh, we actually went to the Peak District, I think, in the UK. So up north, beautiful, beautiful countryside. Um, Will, my apologies if I have overlooked your previous comment. You uh, Will joined us yesterday, uh, charting uh, stream in the morning, game streams in the evening for the viewers as well. What do you play? Well, we never touched on this. Didn't know you were a gamer. What do you play? Oh come on, it seems like. I would say like 70%, you know, as soon as you're like, yeah, I'm a little bit of a gamer. They're like, oh yeah, really? What do you play? <laughs> and then all of a sudden it turns into like, a, uh, it turns into uh, like, a, a, you know, but, but because, you know, I think what, uh, what we love about 
uh, Trade Delicious, right, and the trading community in general, right, is that people share our interest in trading, right? Self-improvement, you know, building wealth for themselves through these markets, finding out ways how to effectively build wealth, right? That's what we're trying to do here. We, we turn up every day and we say, okay, you know, what are we looking at in there as rich as, what the heck? Just push up a little bit and fill rich so we can see him trade this. Yeah, um, a, we are I'm, so, I'm, so close to that. I'm just, uh, I oh, did you mark it in? No, I'm right. trying to. I don't understand why I'm not. Ah, uh, it's not highlighting this. Ugh, if this doesn't feel, um, and I don't want to hit it again. We've already done. No, it. I, I, it, as it as it feels you six times. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. We suddenly yeah, jumped to 30, 30 lines on this. Well, this, you've got you've got an order placed in there. That's your pending order there. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, okay. Maybe, okay. But yeah, so as Rich is hopefully getting filled on this position, I think you know we we turn up every day. We want to be, uh, we want to we want to learn from each other. We want to trade these markets. Um, you know, uh, I think the same way it goes for video games. Like you, you find out somebody's interested in what you're interested in, and then all of a sudden it turns into a thing. So, um, but I think a lot of traders, right? I think we're comfortable in front of computers. We're comfortable in this environment, and I think that manifests itself both in our work and our play, right? Uh, we, yeah. we sit there and we're, we're very comfortable with that, um, you know, and that's, and, and that's okay. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of it too, I think COVID, you know, I think at that time, that time in our lives, not that long ago, kind of forced us to be become more intimate with this interface and say, Hey, like, we're going to get into this, uh, you know, and you're going to have to be comfortable with it because this is how you're going to work. This is how you're mm -hmm. going to play. This is what you're going to do. Um, so I think we're, we're coming out of that a little bit uh, while we've expressed the idea that we we do definitely uh, love to be outdoors and like to, you know, kind of interact with the world. Um, this is a way to do that uh, much more easily. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's face it, I think uh, uh, we tend to, you know, uh, go for what's easy a little bit. Um, and, and this is just a little bit easier. So uh, Rich is now in position. So we shall see. Um uh, how this uh how this goes here right you're in position aren't you no oh, i didn't get really in. did not get filled on this um so what's actually happened at the moment is, is i have hit the sell button once or twice i'm getting a, a ringing noise on this i just want to pull this across and uh yeah just gonna just gonna sit there and watch the limit order get filled on this I, this is the price i want i can't chase this if this doesn't if this doesn't feel i'm gonna have to rethink things um, and then we're going to pick up the the word in chat as well, the keyword. We'll get that flying in a minute. Just conscious, want to want to see this trade come up and do something here, but it's just not. Just apologies on that. This this is what I like. When you're I think if you talk serious you're business. Just, let me. Uh, uh, I'll, so Stephen says, uh, him and the wife used to be a family affair, right? Used to be in a Call of Duty clan years ago. Xbox 360 times. That was about the time. I was a, a, a avid, um, it was Xbox 360 times. I was an avid Modern Warfare 2 and uh, Black Ops. Uh, the first edition of Black Ops came out and I got so like hyped up for this game. This video game, Richard, could you believe it? If you pre-ordered it, you got like a medal, like mm -hmm. a, like, like a, like a, like an award and a drone. It was really just a remote control car with a camera on it. But you got this drone because uh, you had like little drone bombs. And I would I took that thing to work and we had this big gym in the back of work. And I was driving that drone all over the building like, oh, my goodness. I was like, so one of, the, one of the very few times where like spent twice as much as the game was worth just to get the little widgets with it. Um, yeah, I, I, I fell off the Call of Duty after that. Like it just that that was I think it was a combination of my youth. Um, and the quality of those games. That was a really, really good uh, uh, good time. As Jordan mentions that there's a unique crossover between traders and gamers. You know, I've not had the opportunity to have the detailed gamer talk with Jordan. Jordan asked me one time, hey, what kind of games do you play? I'm like, uh, yeah, we'll get to, we'll get back to that. And we still, I still owe him that conversation. Uh, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a video chat where we, where, where I broadcast my, uh, my steam catalog and he says, holy crap. And it's like, yeah, there's probably $10,000 in here <laughs> worth of video games. It just happens. Uh, it just happens to be that way uh, for sure. Um, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. I can't, I probably, so 
I was a hardcore guy. I didn't like playing regular. I only like playing on hardcore. Okay, I gotta stop. I'm getting. I'm like geeking out, and half the chat's like, what the heck is <laughs> from "Call of Duty." Um, you know, as we look, as we look here, uh, did you get filled on that cell? Looks like you did. We, yeah. We've got price to finally cross your level. Um, it's good that you didn't chase it. Uh, I was hoping that you didn't. Um, you know, like that's the price that. you wanted, right? All that selling pressure to the left side here, confirmed yep. by this higher high, lower low, lower low, and and volume coming in as well in this in this download here. If we look at the five minute, this is this is what I'm seeing. These beautiful beautiful selling candles. I'm like, look, this is where sellers just they got their freak on. They went short here. I'm anticipating maybe they want a bit of follow through on this. So this is the idea behind this trade this morning. So this is this trade will not. This trade will not be cut short. This trade is going to be a stop loss or profit trade. I'm 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 done with closing early, David. I cannot be uh, I cannot be closing trades early and watching the market roll over. I'm not built for that world. So uh, I've got my analysis. My edge typically comes from my entry. If the market goes super super deep, okay, maybe I have to have a rethink. But I'm looking for volume round about this price point. I know in an ideal world we could pull the stop loss down to here and be super super spicy with this, but that's I'm not about that life. I want a little bit of room for the market to breathe. When I say a little bit of room, when I mean, this is only eight pips, so it's not it's not huge. So we're managing risk well on this high. We have six hundred and fifty five dollars of risk. And we're just looking for sellers to start coming into the market um, at the moment. So I've been through the chat. We do have the keyword. Now, it, it wasn't the one that necessarily made me laugh the most. There was, there was some that were pretty funny in there. But there was stuff that I probably shouldn't have as a, you know, come on, Jordan rocks up. Probably not. Yeah. And he's like, why is everyone spamming beans and beans on toast in the chat? Like, do, we can probably keep it a little bit trading related. So the keyword, I'll pull it up in chat a little uh, in a couple of minutes. I'm just a little distracted because this trade is going a bit deeper. This is kind of final, final level here. So if we don't start seeing some selling interest round about now, I think I've caught a bit of a wrong on this trade. And that's okay. That's okay because we talk probabilities with this. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, you know, and I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at EU kind of uh, uh, kind of performing much in the same way right now. This past 15 minute candle, uh, you know, uh, has uh, printed uh, pretty pretty bullish on there. We're halfway through it, and uh, uh, we've got really bullish action on on, on both these uh, on both these pairs. Um, you know, and I'm looking, you know, at the Dixie itself. You know, we sold off uh, quite aggressively yesterday uh you know into these levels we're retesting these lows uh on on dxy so we'll talk i'll pull this up here so this is just dollar right this is this is a dxy uh you so us dollar uh strong yesterday uh double top sold off that double top we're hanging out near the lows we've double topped at a lower level this 104841 uh give or take uh, these lows are around, uh, you know, not, this isn't a huge range, right? We're, we're, we're in a consolidative range, but we're, te we, we're retesting the low of these, uh, the low of this range. Right. Um, you know, so I, I think that, you know, I, I always like to, I'm tr as I'm trying to be a better Forex trader, right. And trying to figure out what the, you know, number one, how to spell Forex, uh, but then number two, okay. If I'm trading something against something, I kind of want to learn about it. I'm looking at what dollar does, how the dollar moves. Um, you know, it, it's a market I trade already, you know, being the U.S. market. So anything that's paired against it, it I, I feel like I can kind of work around uh, around uh, understanding it a, a little bit more quickly. Kind of funny how the price action was almost exactly the same in, in this price here. And then kind of the action here, kind of the same same thing, just like a complete rejection of those this 104842 right so i'm i'm interested to see if this is going to continue because this just happened again and we didn't like this price action midday yesterday we did the same thing did not like that price after selling off from up here so we'll see if this uh this has a bit of continuation back down to this while uh the uh these mid 104 uh level down here there's there's quite a bit of room down here if this is going to continue this way now we used to have right what we used to talk about in u.s markets right is we used to look at the nasdaq and we used to look at the dixie and, and say you know look for an inverse correlation it used to move inverse to each other 
Um, you know, you look at the uh, uh, you, you look at the Nasdaq and you say, OK, well, if the if the dollar selling off, then the Nasdaq is bidding up. And what we've seen is actually a correlation of dollar with Nasdaq here lately where we sold off Nasdaq yesterday. We kind of popped up recovered in price a little bit. Now we're kind of chopping around. We haven't been able to rally off that price. Um, you look at that and you look at it compared to the dollar and we're basically doing the same thing on on the dollar for mm -hmm. uh, that's the Dow Jones on the dollar. Same thing, right? Selling off uh, from highs. We did have a bit more of a rally in there so that that uh, market relationship did exist uh, for a little bit. Um, I like this. I, I, I want to just, I'll just quickly, I've got to touch on this. And it was brought up in chat. It was like, can we get a trading setup giveaway when Trade Delicious will get 10,000 subs? And then Jordan, good morning, comes back with a pair of eyes. One Could thing you... we are keen about doing in, 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 in Trade Delicious is giving back to the trading community. You guys and girls turn up with us every single day. And we're here Monday to Friday, UK stream, Tuesdays and Thursdays, US stream. We, we've got traders of money. We've got psychology episodes. There's so much good stuff that's going on at Trade Delicious. And without your support, again, we just wouldn't be able to build this community. So with that said, let's go ahead. Let's give away this account live on stream. We've got the keyword. If you check chat earlier, you'll know exactly what it is. So let's start with an account giveaway. Let's give back to the community who just keeps giving. I'm going to pull this up on screen quickly so we can see the trade that we're in at the moment. Not my preferred not my preferred outcome. The market is, is pushing higher. I did say that we may consider going to this price point. It's exactly where the market's gone and then holding ever so slightly. Now, if this trade hits stop loss, what this does for me, it tells me it was one good loss. And in, in a weird way, David, I feel so much more comfortable about taking a full loss on this trade than I would having the market oscillate around and have to make a horrible decision. So I have my analysis. This is why you my story. are. It's that closure. It's that it's that bit of closure. Uh, somebody had mentioned earlier while you're talking about this trade here, right? You get that bit of closure. You want to you want to know that you're wrong uh, earlier mm -hmm. um, uh, versus, you know, holding off for two hours and then being wrong. It's like a waste of time. Just tell me I'm wrong now. Just tell me I'm wrong now. And then uh, and then and then uh, we'll do it. up. Someone asked to look at. Uh, um, I'm going to pull this up real quick. Uh, Euro uh, AUD. I don't know where your entry is, um, but this is my quick analysis on it. Here's 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 where resistance is on this. And okay. it's pretty, it's it's pretty pronounced resistance on it. So uh, depending on where you got in long, this is kind of what I'm seeing. We're already kind of in this 15 minute candle reversing off this price action here. Uh, so it's pretty simple stuff um, in terms of that. If you just got in the long um you know i don't i'm guessing your stop is down here you're looking for it to break through here and then retest uh this other mm -hmm. resistance level right that's uh that is uh, that is yep okay drag this up resistance level in and around this price area right i'll just uh, pop this on the screen while david's doing the analysis on this we'll get this cooking the giveaway account is Profit rocket. So we've got to hit oh, that. Thing up. Oh boy. No. Okay. My mind was all right. Profit, yep. Uh, rocket. Profit, so, rocket. Okay. Yep. That sounds great, Rich. Hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, and type a profit rocket in the comment section while David finishes this analysis on this. Sorry, just wanted to get that up on the on the screen. Oh, oh my god. All right. Um Someone call the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait. All right. Yeah. So Wait, have I, hang on. Hang on. Have I have I walked into something unknowingly here? Uh, a it... little bit. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. really? A little bit. Oh. Yeah. It's just, it's very close and we're very immature. At least me, me, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit immature. Uh, okay. Oh. So yeah, we, we, I do see I resistance like in and around this, this price this. level. Um, Sorry, if we break through this price level, this is the other portion of resistance up there. This 166, 208. So, you know, you've got, you've got two, two bits of resistance to kind of work through. Hopefully you can work through this one and, and push back up through it. But again, this is a pretty big level. Um, you did double top here, uh, earlier. Um, but you've got all this stuff to kind of chew through on the, if you're long biased, um, at least on the 15 minute chart, if you're on a longer term chart, let's take a look at the hourly. See what we look like on the hourly. Mm. 
hourly looks a little better. I think the hourly looks a little better, but again, you're still working on these levels here. So it's the same levels, whether it's the 15 or the or the hourly, you do have some some bullish signs uh, the last few hours with these. Uh, uh, we've got 15 minutes left to close here. We could see another really strong bullish candle on the hourly retest these highs. So it really depends on your entry as to where you're where you're at in the evolution of your trade. Uh, what I've noticed about forex traders, and I and I was on uh, you know talking with Rich yesterday, is like. Are you guys generally like all or nothing traders as you're try as you're typing in the keyword? Um, you know, I you know, something to think about. Like, are you guys do you get into a position and then look to execute and get completely out of the position? Do you do you um do you trade in in portions of a position, i.e. take a piece out here, take a piece out there? Um uh, you know, like how do you do how do you do this, you know? I like to take partials, right? When I trade, I like to be able to take uh, take partials, take partial fills, uh, take partial, uh, you know, especially on my exits. And then, you know, that gives me more room in my mind to let a trade breathe a little bit more and see if I can't get a longer runner out of out, out of smaller shares. Um, and, and Rich typically, you know, uh, on his personal account, right, he'll take partials, right, uh, partial entries. You know, trying to get into the price, try to get in at a better price, and then execute a full a full exit. So it's a little bit different uh, strategy. But um, you know, uh, uh, share with me what you, what's your wisest way of doing it. The the two trades that I the three trades that I've taken on EU that have presented themselves to me. Uh, again, I'm two for three on those EU mm -hmm. trades. Um, I went in full uh, you know full size in. And then full size out as terms of either what whether it was my stop loss or 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 my take profit. Um, I, I take that back. The first trade, I didn't uh, was a full exit. The second trade, I I, I traded out a half, traded out a half on the way up, and then traded out of another half um, on the way up. So, uh, mm -hmm. two different methodologies as far as exiting the trade. Yeah, um, Nature is saying all in and all out, and Jordan is saying I change depending on the setup. Uh, we actually got two trades running at the moment, which I, which kind of highlight this same thing. So take this trade here, for example, GU. It was an analysis based on this is where I'm looking for volume to come into the market, and the market has this much room to breathe, and I'd like it to start finding selling interest, ideally closer to this entry level, but giving myself this entire zone. Because once we break this high, like David said earlier, it's – it's a good chance the market just goes. See yeah. so, <laughs> with the deck, so this is um this is a little bit different. This is actually what I do when I'm trading the DAX myself. So you saw me put these orders in earlier. Now what we had is we had this 15 minute bearish candle. Sellers tried to push price lower. Buyers said no, you don't. Sellers said yes, yes we do. And buyers said absolutely not. So when I saw this kind of big W formation where the market went down, up, down, and up and closed on this high, what I did is I zoomed out and I said, I, I think we're going to break this in the same way that the market could just go see ya and off it goes to the upside. Now, once we oscillated within this range on a pullback, I said, well, this is where the buying interest is coming in. I'm going to add the other order on this low. So I've got $250 risk per position here. And when the market oscillated around, I went in with my second order. So different way of doing things, averaging in, and, and kind of playing price action within this. We see we've got two orders, a little bit in profit at the moment. And then with Euro, sorry, GBP USD, we've gone in with our full size on this. And I'm totally comfortable with this trade hitting stop. It will be a little bit unlucky with the amount of trades we've placed with you know, $150, $200 risk, and then got away with those trades at $100 profit, $200 profit. It will be a little bit unlucky if the, the you know the first couple of trades where we size up because we're trading the lights. Um, it will be a little bit unlucky if, if we hit stops on that. But objectively, from an R perspective, I'm still in a position of, of where I want to be, which is where I'm making quite a bit more than what I'm losing from an R perspective. So we are seeing a little bit of selling interest here. I'm not quite convinced because, again, looking at the lower time frame, market's got to break where the volume came in and the throttle was hit by buyers. So this is lower time frame. This is one minute chart. So I'm not going to get sucked into the noise. I'm going to keep it on the higher time frame, knowing my stop gives me more information about the market if it is here. Um, now, 
for those of you who, and I did receive a text message that said about the keyword we're using this morning, ladies and gentlemen, please get your minds out of the gutter. We are talking about profit. Rock. Oh, we understand. And, we we understand. All okay. right. Okay, and I understand why there may have been a little slip of the tongue and it might have sounded something a little bit different, but we're talking about profit. Well, profit. About yes, um, yes, uh, which is what we want our profits to do. Absolutely. Uh, I, I just, boy. Um, <laughs> oh, no. You can Anna is always up. long to you. I, I'm selling to you and Anna is long to you. I'm, uh, oh, oh, she, no. oh, boy. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, you get to pay Anna. Just feel good yeah. about it. Pay not her. if this rolls over. No, I mean, not if this rolls no, over. We it's, got, not, we got, it's not over, right? Yeah. Bellas are uh, trying. It's not over. But like this, at this point, right? This is where, you know, for me, right? And this is what I did on, on all of my uh, currency pairs because I'm looking, I'm looking at uh at an EU short, actually. I'm looking, I'm looking to take this thing short. I was hoping to get it closer to the top there, but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna enter enter a short and see if we don't retest these lows. Uh, mm -hmm. a little bit um because uh that's kind of where price is more favorable to uh risk to reward wise but you know uh don't get into uh you know fifty dollars drawdown I'm like all right yep uh, we're just gonna cut it here i was wrong less wrong less wrong yesterday uh i think uh um uh, you know I, I think price has a story to tell and you just have to let it tell its story um you know in, in terms of, of your trade and you know, if you guys keep the likes up, then Rich will be able to recover this account much more quickly. <laughs> but if he's sizing down, right, if we're sizing down on the likes and Rich is having to size down on the lots, then he's not going to be able to recover as quickly. But again, I think this is that the, the, the lesson in all of this is right. And the takeaway is as we're trading the likes and we're doing this for entertainment and making sure that, you know, we can we can manage our risk around this stuff um, is that that's part of your strategy, right? And what I mean by that is you, your lot size, what you go in, whatever your position size is, right? Mm -hmm. when you go into a position, you have to be somewhat consistent on it. And if you change the position size, you yeah. also have to document that, right? Because here's what happens. I go in, you know, and I'll use terminology that I understand because I trade stock, right? So if I sit there and say, all right, I typically buy 50 shares of stock A. Uh, that's my position size. I mean, either buy or sell 50 shares, right? And then all of a sudden, I go from 50 shares to 300 shares, right? On 50 shares, I was successful. On 300 shares, I I, I didn't trade nearly as effectively. Whatever it was, I fat fingered the execution. Whatever I was doing in there, all of a sudden, is it the strategy that's that's out of whack, or is it you know, or or is it my uh, my emotions around trading that size, right? And then what happens to the account? And so you could say, okay, well, 300 was probably not the way to scale up. It was probably going from 50 to maybe 75 to shares to 100 shares to 150 shares to, you know, you, you kind of size up, you know, incrementally over time instead of trying to size up all at once, right? Um, that makes a huge difference uh, in, in your psychology. And it makes a huge difference in the PL because it allows your account, right? It allows your account to to breathe a little bit, you know, and make sure that your equity curve is a consistent equity curve for both the account itself in reality and your yeah. psychology as um, as a whole. Um, as yeah, I really honestly, mm, I'm gonna try to on in there, dear life. But look at these, look at this buying pressure from this low. This is this is this is really where I was trying to buy this morning and just miss the entry. Look at this buying follow through. I mean, I, I'm seeing this market now, thinking we're probably going to start continuing up until we get into all this chop. But uh, one thing I want to touch on quickly: so final 60 seconds before we give this account away on stream. Trade Listers has got some awesome new shows coming up. So Crypto Calf is coming soon, as well as Futures focus so we've got those as well as all the content that you can find in the live videos on stream as well as the uh the um what we, I'm, I'm so distracted by this trade as well as the uh what do we got come on help me out david we got so new website about futures focus we're talking yeah. about crypto cafe uh we got those shows coming out uh, uh very very soon uh, look for those, uh, you know, on the channel, uh, some new and exciting content. We're always we're always coming out with uh, there's always some stuff in the lab. 
trust us, uh, in terms of, of what we've got going on. Mind over markets, if you haven't been there, we've done a lot of mind over marketing type things on the stream uh, today. Uh, but I think that's super important. Uh, traders kind of overlook that stuff sometimes. And, they, uh, you know, because it's not as sexy, it's not as exciting. But that's the work of being a trader. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, as we look to give away an account, understand that, uh, you know, uh, you should treat this account as if you bought it, right? If you happen to win it, if it's one of many, then same thing, right? Treat it the way, uh, the, treat it the same way you would as if you would buy it. You know, if you start having bad trading habits, you know, because it was a free account, that, that's going to bleed over into your actual trading. It's not nearly as fun. It's not a lottery ticket. It's an yeah. opportunity, you know, yeah, it's an opportunity to, you know, uh, to uh, get get into the space, uh, find find, you know, for test the strategy, uh, back test us uh, and uh, be able to uh, to to, you know, to participate in these markets. Uh, don't don't uh, don't take it for granted uh, would yeah. be my recommendation on this. Absolutely, Thanks, absolutely. Guys. Very well. So I'm look outside. I'm thinking the storms are over for the for the least little bit. Boy, it was thundering and lightning. I was just like, oh my goodness, it was <laughs> something else out there. Let's get this account rolling. So, subscribe to Trade Delicious if you haven't done so already. We're back here Monday to Friday in the live trading session on the Mon uh, in the UK. We have got thumbs up, pips for profit or profit profit rocket. Sorry, I'm. Need to make sure I say that correctly. And how you're going to claim this account is in the link in the description below this video. You're going to click on that and you're going to see a link to Trade Delicious Discord. You're going to join that Discord and you're going to see my name, which is Rich. It will be in red. I'll be online shortly after the stream. Then you're going to send me a DM and I'll make sure I get this account over to you. So good luck, everybody, on this account. Let's see who our lucky winner is today. Nope. Nope. Jordan, how did you even put your name in this hat? No, nope, no, 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 no. We <laughs> we have to yeah, we have to re-roll that. Jordan, go back to this place is so <laughs> scammy. You know what they did? They they had a giveaway and they gave it to the themselves. <laughs> <laughs> What's the odds of this? I mean, this is probably less likely than uh, you want that's to roll it again. Winning. That's what's yeah. the nature winning. And uh, oh, nothing fun. against nature, uh, but yeah. he was part of a statement. He didn't even try. <laughs> Jordan wanted. He didn't even try. Oh my god! He's like, look at All right, this guy. We're gonna roll this again. We're no. gonna roll this again. Sorry, Jordan, you are not today's winner. Nature, winner. how can you tell us that it is rigged? You have already won three accounts. <laughs> I don't want to hear that in here. Right, let's roll this again. We're gonna draw this again. Good luck. Oh, everybody. that's hilarious. Let's go. Let's go. This freaking giveaway tool is broken. All right. <laughs> Evans, Evans, congratulations. I'm so, so pleased that we have a winner that is not, a that is not Jordan on the screen. Fantastic. What the Congrats. heck? Congratulations oh. with that. So join the Discord. Link's in the description below. So it's going to be Trade Delicious Discord, and you're going to send me a DM or reach out to me on the Discord. As soon as you do, I'll make sure that I get that account over to you. Congratulations for that. That's, That's what happened. Oh my goodness. As Rich is trying to be serious, I'm having here have I'm sitting here having a blast. It's like that's the real reason he's not here. Yeah, he's we're doing an account giveaways. I'm not going on stream. Uh, my internet is potato. I I'm moving blah blah blah. You know, I'll catch up with you guys later and I'll just get into the stream chat. Um, you know, uh, before we leave, I did actually enter into a short on EU. I actually uh, took it against this triple top. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Uh, but I like the idea of, you know, a scalp uh, within this range. Hopefully it, uh, it's it's moving in my direction so far. So that's the current update on on EU. This is like my first EU short. So we'll see if it, we'll see if it works out. I'll probably get if it fails, you probably should have stuck to the long side, right? So a uh, quick update yeah. on this. I'll make sure I put it in the Discord. So what do we see? Markets come all the way up really, really close to my stop before finding a little bit of selling pressure. Check out the one minute. This is what we're seeing that's super interesting. Market comes up, comes close to my stop, 
Good amount of selling volume. What did it do? Drop to this point. Why is this point significant? This is where the buying interest came into the market. We have tested this. We have pulled back. We're coming down again. There's only going to be so many orders at each price point. And I'm hoping, shouldn't use that word hope, but I'm anticipating that the market is now going to find an opportunity to move lower. So I'll make sure that I up this update this trade into the Discord. We can see the account is round about break even on the day. And um, if it loses, it is just one good loss and i'm totally totally okay with that so i want to take a moment to thank every single person for joining us here today we're back tomorrow at 8 30 uk time and we'll be giving away another account on stream but more than that we're going to be joining you guys and linking arms with you rubbing shoulders with you and just chatting trading looking at the charts and just sort of sharing trading related content so as always thank you so much for joining us today and we'll catch you again tomorrow cheers Thank you.